world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Uh, we've reached a point of no return with this government, haven't we? I mean, not content with battering us into submission for two years with COVID restrictions, lockdowns, not with not content with, you know, making us pay ludicrous amounts of money for our own energy because we don't have any anymore. Now we're supposed to be, ha- uh, you know, somehow housing refugees from Ukraine. Well, I think this shows, doesn't it, Mike, the absolute failure of this government over the past five years to be able to deal with the huge numbers of economic migrants Mm. and some genuine asylum seekers coming across the channel on our uh, boats, on lorries, and the failure of the Home Office to be able to solve this crisis, which means that now we have a genuine asylum issue. We actually haven't got any spaces in the hotels or in the accommodations that's been set out by government programmes to house genuine asylum seekers. There really isn't any room at all. And as I was saying earlier uh, to a Tory MP, the people of this country, I think, are sort of at breaking point in terms of, you know, the amount of cost that they're having to bear, you know, taxes going up, council taxes going up, services being cut, you know, all sorts of uh, increases in price because of the cost of energy. Uh, We're seeing now absolutely on a regular basis over £2 a litre for diesel in an awful lot of petrol stations around the country. You know, they haven't really got much wiggle room left, have they? No, no, not really. If you look at the facts of the numbers that we've looked at, just on accommodating um, those Ukrainian migrants that are going to, uh, asylum seekers that come across, and don't forget we're still going to have the hundreds a day coming over from the channel. We're looking at around £10 million a day in addition to the £10 billion that we've given to three companies to house them. And that, in this year alone, will add an extra £3.65 billion to the cost of housing alone. Mm. If you then take the fact that we generally see a cost in the first year of all asylum seekers around £40,000 per head, we are looking somewhere between an additional four to £6 billion to house them. We can't afford that, not when we are seeing pensioners struggling to be able to heat their homes, where families are not able to feed their children because of the increasing cost. People are finding it incredibly difficult to get to work with the petrol prices rising. But we will find it because there is a moral responsibility towards the Ukrainians. I accept that. But this is all down to the failure of this government and the other political parties who now are standing up saying, hey, look, we really want to help, when they should have done it in the first place, preventing economic migrants coming across the channel. Exactly right. And they've had plenty of chances to do it and they've made plenty of promises to do it. And I think this latest kind of plea from the Home Office to house uh, Ukrainian refugees in individual places in the country where people live with their families is really more proof that the Home Office is not fit for purpose. You know, one of the one of the least busy times for people arriving on our shores illegally was when the Border Force went on strike because they weren't helping them. No, I, I, actually, there is something that we could come out of this, Mike, and, uh, and uh, we, we've been analysing this. Maybe this is the time for all of those who are the do-gooders, the actors, the lovies, who have been saying we've got a chance mm. to house those asylum seekers to do exactly that. Yeah. Maybe they should now start opening their second homes in Devon and Cornwall and the Lake District mm. and other places like that and say we won't go there because we're going to house these Ukrainians. Or Let's go one stage further. Maybe the government could do a wartime act and second all the second homes of all of those who've been promoting the idea of mass migration for the last yeah. 10 years. Yeah, they could also go for the second homes of MPs. That might help them out a bit as well. <laughs> I think that would do some <laughs> real good thinking for them then if they did. Well, it would. I mean, because that's one of the other things that I hear all the time uh, when people say to me, why are these MPs so out of touch? And so many of them have so many of their expenses paid, including the heating uh, and the electricity bills that they put in for their second homes. And I'm not sure they even know how much things cost. No, I mean, I know this uh, myself. I, I, I have Caligas. It's delivered into my, my cottage. The driver turned up the other day and he said uh, a few weeks ago, the full canister that on the back of that lorry was £10,000. Now it's £16,000. And my bill went up from £900 a year to 1600 That's a huge jump for people. And, and if you think about that to families, and I'm on my own, so I, I can manage it much more easily. Yeah. They're the ones who are going to struggle. We have a quarter of a million people who are born in this country, living in this country, living in bedsits and and, and places that are unfit for them and their children. Where are we finding the money to look after them? 
Where are we going to find the money to look after the elderly in this country? These are massive issues. Yeah. And, and whilst they can pontificate on television and say, look, we know what it's like, they just don't. They are too far removed from the ordinary public to understand the difficulties they're going through. And as far as the actual crossings are concerned, Stephen, finally, um, there's been sort of arguments about whether military involvement is going to be a good thing. There's still promises being made by Tory MPs that this new bill is going to be passed and we're going to have better control. I mean, I don't really believe a word of any of it, do you? No, and, and sadly what this shows is that we, we've known for quite some time that the influence of, of, of a woke policy has entered not only in the military, but also that of the border force. The border force's main job is actually to protect the borders. It's written into its name. So for them to go on strike or reject the ideas that they can force people back into France is nonsensical mm. and against the principles of what they should be doing. I fully understand the army saying, uh, sorry, the, the Navy saying that they don't want to get involved because it would be a PR nightmare for them. And really it's not necessarily a wartime issue, is it? The government is in crisis. The military is in crisis with this issue, the border force is in crisis, and the only people who are suffering are genuine Ukrainian asylum applicants and the people of this country who are paying for people who are failing to do their job properly. Mm, exactly right. Stephen, good to talk to you again. Thank you very much indeed. Stephen Wolf, Director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity.